Welcome to r slash I do work here lady, where we share stories about employees that are mistaken for customers. And the first story is, I work here too, I trained you. I don't know if this is exactly where this goes, but of all my subs, I think it fits best. I'll remove it if inappropriately placed. So I'm a mentor at my work. In essence, I've proven myself knowledgeable and skilled enough in my job that I'm one of the people assigned to teach new employees. I work up front as a cashier slash customer service assistant. I trained this girl that either outright lied to me about working retail, Walmart or Target style, not mall clothing or dedicated grocery, or it's very clear why she's starting a new job. Her customer service is atrocious. She snaps at customers, pushes her opinions into how the customer wants to pay, outright ignores them to fuss with her perfectly fine bagging setup. Minimally, we are expected to look at the customer and say something, anything, to ask for a moment. Uses the hand scanner for every item, despite me asking her to please make a habit of using the regular scanner. Because speed, incessantly pulls out her phone to fix her hair and makeup and take selfies, and is generally rude and snappy to me as well. The list goes on, but those are far more nitpicky things that would take a novel to explain why they're not good qualities in a cashier, and generally against our policy and requests. At our store, the customer can put their card in at any time, as long as they don't have gift cards or multiple forms of payment. Cashier preference does not matter. All we can tell you is that we need you to wait, because of multiple payment forms. I understand other stores the transaction will push through at point of insertion, or fail to work, but not here. So anyway, I train her, finish my shift, and debrief with my manager, to know where she needs improvements later this shift or the next few shifts, as is standard. I'm with this woman for probably three complete hours, and an hour broken up due to getting busy and having to help as backup. By that point she was capable to remain on her own, but occasionally needed help. So I clock out and do a little shopping. The lights flicker while I'm picking out a brand of granola bars, and I groan. The front is gonna suck. Whenever we have a power outage, even for a moment, we always get incredibly busy because the current people in line get stuck at the front and the people who'd be checking out five minutes from now all hit the front and make it a backed up mess. I'd consider waiting around for a half hour to let it die down, but instead only get my essentials I need, milk, bread, etc. and head up. I'll get snacks later. I get to the front and lo and behold it's not bad. The outage only killed the four self-checkouts. I get in line and get directed to the new girl by my manager. She's sending people to lanes, rather than let it become a tangled mess. I was next. New girl was finishing a transaction. Well, I start unloading, and I see the man is paying with a rebate check, and the machine is refusing to take it, because she's trying to run it as a normal check. I hear my manager behind me calming down a screamer. All the other cashiers are just as busy, and no other leader is there to help. So, I break policy, off the clock working, and offer to show her how. She snaps at me. Lady, I'll help you after I fix this guy's broken check. We lock eyes. She doesn't recognize me. She returns to destroying this man's rebate check. I unzip my hoodie, name tag still attached to my work shirt, step around behind the register, snatch the rebate check out of her hand just before she shoves it in sideways. Anyone who knows how to use a check reader knows most aren't wide enough to accept a check sideways and will rip it up. I back out, hit rebate check, enter the amount, stick the check in and in my sweetest voice, very sorry about that sir and how else will you be paying? and return to my place on the customer side. She rings my items through with the shame in her eyes that will fuel me for generations. The man pulled me aside as I'm walking to the door and asks if I'm a manager. Me, no sir, I'm a trainer. I'm also off the clock. Would you like me to find my manager for you? Him, no, that's fine. The embarrassment in her eyes after that show you made is punishment enough for her behavior just now. I just wanted to thank you. Also, she needs more training. He gives me a silly face as I giggle because no SH, Sherlock. I thank him for shopping at store, and we go our separate ways. My manager's probably gonna have words for me next shift, but ugh, I don't care. Her attitude all day, and especially there, was unacceptable. The second story is, I am the supervisor, and the answer is still no. I work in an office environment where I have to process paperwork for clients. For the most part, the people we have to deal with are fine, but every now and then we end up having to deal with people who are peeved off. Usually it's because of something they did themselves, and they're peeved off because we can't fix it for them. I'm a supervisor in my office. There are a couple of people above me, but on the day this story took place, I was the only one on staff to look after the office. One of my coworkers, we'll call her Jay, was working at our front door, essentially doing what we consider triage, where they look at people's paperwork to make sure that everything is right. Jay had already looked at this guy's paperwork. We'll call him G, and of course, I will be me. A bit of background information, I'm the youngest employee in my office. I also have a tendency to dress relatively comfortable. Everyone in my office does for the most part. I usually tend to wear a lot of plaid, comic book t-shirts and jeans. I'll admit that my appearance doesn't necessarily scream I'm in charge. 
Anyways, I get a call over one of our radios from Jay at the door, saying she had sent a customer my way, who was giving her a hard time at the door. She gave me a brief explanation of what was wrong. Essentially, his paperwork was all completely wrong. He had no ID, and he wanted us to process everything anyways. Which was not going to happen, until he got the documents and paperwork fixed. The guy got to the corner I was stationed at, and started looking around like he was looking for someone else. And that's where it started. Me. Hello, how can I help you? G. I'm looking for a supervisor. Me. I know. What can I do for you? G rolls his eyes and huffs before slamming his paperwork down. I showed this SH to the B at the door and she said we can't do it. Me. Okay, I'm gonna have to ask that you watch your language. As you can see, there are children around over there. Let me take a look at what you have there. G. I don't give an F about those kids. I already showed the C up there. I want to see a supervisor. Me. Sir, I can't help you if you don't allow me to look at your documents so I can get an idea of what the issue is. G throws his papers at me. Fine, whatever. At this point, I discreetly signal for our security guard to come close, to keep an eye on things. Me looking through the papers. Okay, sir, I can see what the issue is. The names and dates don't match from one document to the others. G. So? Me. Well, sir, if the information doesn't match, we can't process. The information needs to be consistent. If you'd like, I could explain what needs to be done to correct it. G. I don't want to correct it. The papers are fine. I just need it processed. Me. I'm sorry, sir, but this paperwork is not acceptable as is. You're going to need to get it fixed before we can process. I can write it all down for you, but I'm afraid we can't process this right now. G. Huffing again. Listen, I came over here to talk to a supervisor so I can get this SH processed now. I'm not fixing it, and I'm not leaving until it gets done. At this point, the security guard is standing behind him. Me. Well, unfortunately, we won't be able to process this paperwork as it is. If you'd like, I could call ahead to the company you have to contact to have it fixed and tell them what needs to be done so they can have it ready when you get there so you can have this processed as soon as possible. G. F you and F the effing C at the door. Give me the effing supervisor now. I'm done with this SH. Security guard. Sir, please watch your language. G. F you too. Supervisor, now. This SH is getting done right now. Me. Sir, I am the supervisor. That's why you were sent to see me. G. F you, I want to see someone else. Me, unfortunately, I'm the only supervisor on staff for the rest of the week. As I've said before, the paperwork will not be processed the way it is. This is what needs to be done to fix it. Writing it down for him. G, get effed, yanking the paperwork away. I'm going to go to the name of another office. They'll do it there. The guy stormed out yelling and swearing with our security guard following behind. I called ahead to the other office, since they're part of our office, just another location. I warned them about the guy and later got a nice email from the manager there saying that the guy showed up there and flipped out because they wouldn't do it either. They ended up calling the police on him. And the last story is, I know the rules, sir. You apparently don't. Okay, so technically, I don't work with this company, but I volunteer to help my boyfriend with his second job. The job is picking up trash at a few apartment complexes and taking the trash to either the compactor or the dumpster, depending on the complex. There's just a few rules different for each complex. This particular complex, the rules are very simple. We don't take untied bags. Quick fix, and he and I are nice enough to where we just tie them. We don't take any bags over 50 pounds or so. We don't take furniture or anything of the sort. Plastic laundry bins, chairs, machinery, etc. We don't take boxes unless they're broken down flat, and we don't take any open glass. Very simple rules that I think most would be able to understand. Apparently, this guy can't understand these rules. I've had to deal with this guy leaving bags of his dog's SH on his porch outside of his trash bag to where I have to open his trash, or his neighbors, because this guy ties his trash bags tighter than a surgeon ties stitches together, and individually put each little baggie into the larger trash bag. Not even considerate enough to put them into a small plastic bag, like a Walmart bag and have them separate. Just individual baggies on the porch. Well, a couple weeks ago, his bag was well over 50 pounds. I could barely lift it an inch off the ground and was not going to attempt to drag it down the stairs and risk breaking the bag. So I took the little baggies and put it in the neighbor's trash bag and took those bags to the truck so we could take it to the compactor. As I'm walking back to get more trash, I pile it together to make it easier. The guy comes out of his apartment and sees the bag still on his porch. Obviously upset, he takes the bag down the stairs and out to where the truck is. No problem, thanks for getting the bag I couldn't. As I'm walking back with more bags to the truck, I see he placed it on the curb next to the truck. Now, I could understand if the truck just looked like some random truck and he didn't want to put trash in the back of a truck not knowing if it was the right one or not, but it was very obviously full of trash bags he had seen me put in there. No big deal, I call my boyfriend and tell him there's a bag on the curb that'll have to put in the truck since I can't lift it. Fast forward to earlier this week, I see a bag on his porch and hop up the steps to grab it. Two bags, no biggie, and a box. 
an open box full of glass bottles, which we don't pick up for safety reasons, and because of ruling. We don't take boxes that aren't broken down, since someone could confuse a package for a box full of trash, or claim that if they stole a package. So I take the bags and leave the box, don't even touch it. So I take the bags down to the truck and continue with my half of the complex. As I'm looping back through to see if I missed any bags, or if any bags were taken out after I came through, the guy runs into me. Now, he's only seen me as a trash person. I don't even live in the same town as this complex, so that's all I am to him. A stupid trash collector. No offense meant to any trash collectors reading this. I will be me, and he will be SM. For SH man. SM. Why do you keep skipping my apartment? Me. I'm sorry? SM. I said why do you keep skipping my apartment? You've done this multiple times. I'm going to contact your boss if this happens again. Me. Sir, I can guarantee that I have not skipped your apartment. SM. You have? This is the second or third time you've left trash at my door. Me. Sir, the only things I leave at the doors are the things I'm not allowed to pick up per our ruling. SM. That's BS. I've read the rules for trash, and all it says is to put it on the front door for pickup, and that we don't get pickup on weekends. Me. If you would like for me to list the rules for pickup, I can, because you seem to be missing some of our rules. SM. I don't need you to tell me what I already know. Me. I'd just like to remind you we're not allowed to take any bags over 50 pounds, any open boxes, any open glass, or any furniture. All trash must either be in bags or boxes that are broken down, and all bags must be tied. SM. No, you take the trash. That's it. Now go up there and take that trash off my doorstep before I call the complex manager and get in contact with your boss. Me. Well, good luck getting in touch with my boyfriend's boss. He's currently at the hospital, so he won't be taking any calls. SM. Stop making SH up and go pick up that trash. That's your job. Go take the trash. At this point, a couple of people have either come out of their apartment or opened their porch door to see what the heck this man is yelling at me. Me. Sir, if you'd like the trash that remains on your front step to go to the compactor, unfortunately, because of the rules I have stated to you, you'll have to take it to the compactor yourself. SM starts yelling at me again, which frankly I just tuned out, decided I don't have to deal with this and just smiled at him. After a few minutes of him yelling at me and telling me to wipe that R grin off my face, one of the people who had their porch door open told him to shut the heck up because it was past 9pm and people were trying to sleep and that he should be grateful that someone even picks up his trash anyway, and he could at least be courteous enough to trash in bags and not leave it there on the porch. SM gets peeved that someone took my side and huffed off up his stairs, picks the box of glass bottles up and throws it over the handrail. Yeah, no. I walk away and continue with my checks, after thanking the person who took my side, of course. I'm almost certain that man was drunk, but even so I didn't want to make anything worse than it was, causing my boyfriend to possibly lose his job. Thank you for watching. Bye.